been a small world after all because when the covenant of God has been given, I will be your God, you will be my people, I will forgive your iniquity, never remember it again, Jeremiah 31. When that happened, the mystery of God was over, all over, and it's a small world after all because Israel has inherited all mankind, yay! And now, God has named them Chrislam. Yay! That is exactly what was foretold in Isaiah 62 too, that would happen. Yay! That would happen in the days when God would be the Lord God of all families of Israel, from the least to the greatest, and he said all would know him. Yay! And so guess what? Uh, that is why they have inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3. Yay! Because it's a small world after all, and there's only one God, and he has been the Lord God of everyone. Yay! Isn't that good news? That he's not the God of Christians, he's not the God of these ones or those ones, he's everyone's God. Uh, and he arises now as the good shepherd over all the flocks of man. Uh, and he is saying the same thing to all. I will be your God, you will be my people, I will forgive your iniquity, never remember it again. Right? My love and my law in your hearts. Beyond that, no one will ever need to be taught of me anymore, says the Lord God. He is a roaring lion of Zion. And these are the days when we need to get with the right program of the exaltation of He who is our Lord of love. And if we can get that into us, these are going to be some exciting kingdom age days coming forth. And so it's time to praise Him like ten men. Because as we exalt His magnificence of His beneficence, His blessings are overflowing, it will raise us up to a higher place within the unity of love. So we may stop and smell the roses too. Because He is the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. So praise God, it's time to get along with that knowledge. He was a, a, a man of many sorrows. And in these kingdom age days, the Lord asked, Who will come and feed the master's household meat while the master is away? And he told them, Matthew 17, 11, that Elijah is going to restore all things. And uh, wouldn't you know the, the Elijah, uh, wouldn't you know, my luck, Murphy's Law, if it can go wrong, it will, it does. Uh, that's, it's always on the bottom when you're looking for it, right? But uh, wouldn't you know that the ministry that I trained for my whole life, that uh, I've done everything in vain, Isaiah 49.4, was written of Elijah. That's why I've got 6,000 videos. i got uh, 2,300 uh, on one channel. i got 12 subscribers. People do not want any uh, word of the quality of mankind. They want their uh, critical, judgmental uh, world that's falling apart. They don't want any new truths that are provable and they have no root or a branch to hold on to. These are days that are burning as an oven, and in these days the sickle must be beat uh, and from the sword, uh, because people are only cutting each other with the sword, and it's insane. These are the days of the obsolescence of religion as it has been known on planet Earth. Uh, according to Hebrews 8, Paul said that when you hear those words, I will be your God, you will be my people, our faith in this world would be obsolete. Muhammad said, the day is coming in the Hadith, there will be no more uh, of the Quran except its outward form, and my people will belong to another that sounds like Islam. Um, and it will happen because it will book proving God's mercy um, and removing distortion. Kingdom age time is what he was saying. And so praise God, he knew that prophet was not ahead of him. That's why he always correctly said, there'll never be another important prophet in the future. I'm only the messenger. Uh, don't shoot the messenger, but uh, I'm the messenger of Jeremiah. And so praise the Lord that these are days of Elijah, days of Shiloh, days of the latter day Daniel, days of Joshua, water, steam, and ice, days of Isa, Yeshua, Jesus, Emmanuel, Christ, water, steam, and ice, all the same guy. So has all the other names that's been attributed to uh, Elijah. Elijah was called Shiloh in Genesis 49, 12, because when Moses wrote that, the first Elijah had not even come. And God did not tell him any name except to put Shiloh. Jesus was never Shiloh. Uh, he never had eyes red and dull of wine, as Genesis 49, 12 says. And I hold the scepter of all of God's authority. So know that faith in that man, many man, he brought forth uh, 
uh, a new song uh, uh, upon the last flutters of the wings of the time of law. And it seemed like all the answers of Christ's enigma of God's greatest puzzlement should have been most easily have been able to be found seemingly that way and solved as easily as the riddle that Samson once confounded the wise with. But as the last drops of his shed blood fell down, the, uh, an earthquake crack. On the, uh, during the earthquake, the ground opened and some of his blood fell down into the crack. And it was discovered by a, name, a man named Ron Wyatt. So Google uh, YouTube uh, Ron Wyatt Y, uh, w Y A T T Ron Wyatt, um, uh, uh, Blood of Christ. Put those words, Ron Wyatt, Blood of Christ, and you're going to hear a story that I believe, and I believe uh, I'm a good judge of character, and I fully believe Ron. Uh, he, he broke down in tears. His heart was was just so touched by the magnificent miracle that that truly is waiting for you if you uh, will turn there. So praise God that uh, Christ's blood fell down this earthquake crack under the feet of uh, the chosen prophets uh, as Stephen, Nicodemus, and Zacchaeus cried out that it was too late uh, for lifeboats to carry souls to the other side of our great beyond proclaiming strongly in the Spirit, uh, since all of the Lord's faithful few should now be preparing to take, take to the skies, so that with a twinkling of an eye that they could meet uh, the Lord upon the great white cloud of Matthew 24, the great white cloud, Revelation 14, which is the same great white cloud. It is the same exact great white cloud, and Christ is sending forth his everlasting gospel writer line by line, precept by precept, would the strong and mighty one come forth as a destroying storm. And that the um, vision of God was written plainly on the tablets, so all those who may read of it may run. So there's a desecration, a spiritual trigger. But those loving that son of Galilee back in the day clearly saw that his, his sacred temple uh, being so desecrated uh, it was a trigger, making earth to become like a fast-sinking island, easily pulling down all enemies of that son of faith as easily as quicksand effortlessly pulls down anything squirming around like the spineless creatures uh, that were crucifying the Lord were. For it's uh, utter truth that any living soul sinks faster uh, in such fast-sinking sands the more it foolishly squirms around and tries to get away. It's like a lobster tra trap. You just get fall, you fall in, in deeper. Even while you're fighting against the very law of gravity that uh, rules over such boggy quicksands. Say to the torrent to stop in the middle of the, the gorge, it will disobey you. It will rip up all the trees of that valley. Only God alone knows where that water full of that torrent will go. So uh, you never say there will never be another written word of God because you're hearing it. And blessed are all those falling amidst such murk, mucky mire, fighting not against powers out of their control of love. For in giving up their struggle of peace and love and accepting that, much slower will they sink, uh, giving them much more time to be saved. Fortunately, the smart people, wise in their ways, always will stand evermore upon uh, the rock of the ages, and they fall upon him humbly instead of waiting for him to fall on them. That is not a good way to go. And know that all other ground is clearly some fast sinking sand. Muhammad said, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand upon the gospel of love and all revelation coming to you from the Lord God. Uh, and, and the law. You must stand upon the law, love, and the gospel end. So praise the Lord. Uh, all else is fast sinking sand. And so back then, a uh, well financed uh, conspiracy had been in place. Uh, back then, bribery caused great crowds 
of many ignorant mockers to dare mocking our Lord, even though they couldn't comprehend that he couldn't even really be mocked. They were trying to do it anyways, just through ignorance. But people, there is no darker, gross ignorance, darkness than ignorance of love alone. And so, after all, those were the bittersweet days when his pain was their gain for all the mockers around, and even though they knew it not. Notwithstanding, they called that man above men a fool, stripping him uh, of all of his pride, most of his pride, but he never, he ne was never defeated. And they, they never thought about the fact that every lion, and he is, was, always shall be, a roaring lion of Zion. And he's a cool cat, too. That's why I, I, I like his shade. Um, that uh, even, even that lion of Judah has a pride that cannot be taken from them. For as sheep have flocks, all lions have prides. And that is what he wants of us, is to be the pride of the lion of Zion, who's crying each of our names as if we were the only one. These are the days of Elijah, the days when his word is coming forth as a, a great ex explosion in the heavenlies, uh, like a supernova as his living word comes forth saying, Peace, be still, one more time. So Christ was emotionally ravaged back then, and in the state of their unknowing, there were paid witnesses that were called uh, onto that scene. Uh, and they had vested interests. They were bribed and paid off witnesses. So they called our Lord a fool. And everyone seemed to be laughing right up until the moment that he died. Uh, but at that moment, uh, at the moment of his lifelessness, the skies did revolt, the grounds did crack, chaos did come forth, even thunder re resounded. And as the curtains fell, uh, the darkness of all about became much darker than ever before. Great then were the great lamentations over multitudes of silly souls as the grounds of that great quake instantly buckled under their feet so that earth could consume their foolishness that had just pointed some bony fingers uh, towards our most holy one in his worst hour of distress while they declared him to be evil and empowered by the devil. People are doing the same thing again. History repeats itself. I got all kinds of religious people out here that they're looking for nothing from me except they're going to get a shit pie in the eye, just as Malachi 2 says. God says, if you will not embrace that which glorifies my kingdom of love and hope and peace for the kingdom age to arrive, I will take the dung from your, your feasts that have gone rotten and I will pluck it into your face, says the Lord God. Consequently, multitudes of ignoramuses surviving God's wrath uh, were always fated to see that even though the wounds of that healer of wounds had gone really deep, days would become months, months would become years, and years would become decades where he would be constantly calling many deafened souls ever so silently from out of their sleep. And in this hour of the kingdom age arising, he is saying, Arise, shine, your light is now coming. So hear now, all ye brethren of the Lord, ye say Yeshua, Jesus, the risen Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the earth for all of mankind. Uh, for we are not alone, since that master of destiny has allowed his most velvety voice to shout out silently with inquietude, singing over us in silence with gladness for decades that have been leading to centuries, and those centuries have become two long millenniums, but now God's word is coming again. And now Yeshua Shama, who is there for all people of all races and of all beliefs, he only desires to call us home. Uh, we come from the great ocean of love that is God, and we are drops from that ocean, and we only desire to go back from whence we came. And know, therefore, that in the very moment that Abraham lifted the knife over his son Isaac, it committed Emmanuel into come and praise God to the world the first time. Otherwise, it only would have proved that mankind had the ability to love God more than God had the ability and capability to love mankind. 
and nor would uh, our majesty of majesties ever be fated to be slow in pouring out his most tender mercies upon all those of humanity born again of the spirit of the ages and forgiven by God. For all those who love are born of God, born again and know him, because God is love, 1 John 4, 7. And even the hardest of the most hardcore, unloving sinners trying to commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, spiritual suicide of letting his, him, his light in us to go out because he is love living in us. And uh, so know that uh, uh, even if they repented and decided to stay on the straight and narrow path, uh, he would still be calling them, no matter how foolish uh, they might be. Even if they go two steps forward, one step back, they'll still keep going in the right direction, heeding his roar like never before. And so praise God, he will always be kept busy by his spirit who is arising as the son of love with healing under his wings now for all the nations. Uh, so he's busy helping the afflicted, helping the needy, enriching the poor, uh, securing the weak, and making them stronger, enlightening the blind, and meeting those who have strayed because he has been married to the backslider. And he loves all of us. Even if we walk away from him, he will never walk away from us. And you can that you can bet on that. That is an absolute. And Mickey and Minnie are so thrilled, and I am that you had this time to come with me. And uh, someday, uh, somebody's gonna discover that man, this guy is preaching. <laughs> I've never preached a day in my life. I wrote for 20 years. Google my name, Daniel F. Owsley, and you'll see images of some of the 200 books that I have written. So, love from love. Until next time, in love, in Christ's name. Bye.